the last thing I really want to talk about, I mean, in this whole series of things, is that we have antibody drug conjugates. And I know Kim has been very involved in development, and some of us, with uh, TDM1, which is a very successful antibody drug conjugate for her, too. But Atiyah, you've been developed, you've been involved in some of these conjugates. Can you talk about some of the trials that we've done with them so far? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we were inspired by Kim and the uh, TDM1 story, which has been the <coughs> blockbuster drug in HER2 positive breast cancer. So the idea is that you have an <coughs> antibody that binds to the cancer cells and then releases chemo only to the cancer cells while sparing the normal cells. So you can deliver very high doses of chemotherapy only to the cancer cells and have a better um, risk profile. Um, so sasituzumab or IMU132 is an antibody drug conjugate that is being developed for triple negative breast cancer at this time. There's interest in other breast cancers and other solid tumors also. Um, and the idea is that it binds to a target called trope 2, which is overexpressed in most triple negative breast cancers, about 85% of uh, triple negative breast cancers. So the idea is the same, that the antibody would bind to trope 2 and then dump the chemo only to those cells while sparing the normal cells. Um, so it was a phase one clinical trial that um, was started a couple years ago and then moved into phase two. And now we have data in patients with metastatic triple negative breast cancer who received this agent. Um, in, in the clinical trial, we observed an impressive uh, objective response rate of uh, about 30% and a median progression-free survival of about six months in patients who had been heavily pretreated. So these patients had received a median of five prior lines of therapy. And in that heavily pretreated population, to see the signal was, was quite um, encouraging. Um, now, there, there, so this drug received um, FDA breakthrough designation status. Um, and there is interest in potentially looking at accelerated approval. Um, and thinking about a phase three trial as well. So how many patients, uh, how many triple negative patients are TROP2 positive? Um, about 85%. 85? Right wow, so there's really not a lot of selectivity, I guess. So in this, this trial, trial there was, tough. In, in this trial, it was everyone with triple negative breast cancer for this reason. Really? And they're trying to do subset analysis um, of patients who had TROP1+, 2+, 3+, plus, plus, plus yeah. to see um, if there are differences, and I'm sure that we'll come up with certain biomarkers that predict who are likely to benefit the most as opposed to those who would not adopt. Kind of like people would benefit most with TDM1 who are strongly right. HER2 positive. I think your trial is really impressive because a lot of those patients were <coughs> so heavily pretreated, right. mm -hmm. meeting in a four right. different regimens, and um, great job with that drug. I mean, that's a plea. I mean, we're pleading to pharma that you're listening. You know? <laughs> Use this group of patients for trials. Yeah. We have no standard of care. You know, it's not a sexy area. It's not first line. It's not second line. But there's enormous a, a number of people that really could. That are it's performance status is great. Yeah. Well, you know, first line triple negative. You know, there's plenty of right. Plenty I mean, you know, there. and so again, I hopefully that would happen. Um, so I think we're just about done. Okay, I think we've had a great conversation here. A nice rambling conversation. Topics covering <laughs> many many topics. I'm sure we haven't covered them all, but hopefully we've given everybody a flavor of kind of where we are. And so before we end the discussion. Uh, I like some final thoughts. I mean, just summarize where you think uh, uh, we are with advanced breast cancer. Dr. Bardia, we'll start with you. Yeah, I think this is an um, exciting time to be in breast oncology with precision medicine, number of targets, and potential targeted therapies. Um, and I think actually over the next five years, we might reclassify how we think about breast cancer. You know, we initially started with ER positive, ER negative, then we went to HER2 positive, um, and, and triple negative, but as we are coming up with additional targets, we might actually find more positive in triple negative and potentially even reclassify this disease, uh, which, which would be very exciting. Good, very good. Kim? Well, Adam, great job, as always, <laughs> disagreeing with me. You of should course, be you applauded. disagree all the time. Um, you know, my thoughts are early stage breast <coughs> cancer, genomic predictors are here to stay. You need to understand them in order to take care of breast cancer patients understand what they mean, understand how to explain them to patients. And then I think in the metastatic arena, as was mentioned, lots of excitement, lots of new drugs coming on the pike. And although all of us who have busy practices kind of dread the rigmarole that is involved in putting people on trial, it's so worth it to give these options to our patients facing metastatic disease. So my plea is really to continue the moonshot enthusiasm that, you know, Vice President Biden created 
and it definitely is worth the effort. And I think if we involve our patients in this, they're more than willing to help us get these trials accrued. So just don't forget about the clinical trials in the metastatic setting. Very good. Well, yeah, I mean, I obviously have nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, I think the, what we're doing is, is we're, we're trying to hone in on a, a true personalized or precision medicine approach. I mean, we're increasingly, we have a lot of options both in terms of characterization of risk in early disease and then number of different therapies for everything except triple negative um, in advanced disease. And so our, our challenge, it's, it's almost an embarrassment of riches, is to figure out who's going to benefit from what. And I think we need to start thinking, and, and sequencing, which we didn't really talk much about. Mm -hmm. And so we need to perhaps start thinking about the deepest possible characterization of patients, both you know, from a genomic level and potentially from a germline level, so that we can figure out which is the best way of putting these things together for each individual. Great. Well, thank you all very much, and uh, thank you all for your contr contributions to this discussion. On behalf of our panel, we thank you for joining us, and we hope you have found this peer exchange discussion to be useful and informative.